Also, before we begin, just a quick little story. Does anybody, everybody know what the paint bucket tool is in Photoshop? How you doing? <laughs> everybody know what the paint bucket tool is in Photoshop? That's how I got started as a web designer, right? Like, like a lot of people do. Bought some templates, we filled in some colors, we resold it to folks and said, we just designed a website for you. I hope you really like it. Uh, so I label myself a web designer because I know Photoshop. I know how to manage this tool called Paint Bucket. Uh, as we progress, we find uh, new clients, right? Your grandmother's neighbor's cousin needs a website. They call you up, said you could do a website. Yeah, man, that's what I do. I do websites. So you engage with this person, you build a couple websites, you're making some money. So you just, I can really make a career, I can really make a living out of doing this stuff. As your career progresses, $500 client, $600 client, you finally land the big fish, right? And this example will say it's a, it's a dealership, a big auto dealership. They do millions of dollars a year. year. They found you through a local business mixer. They say, can you build me a website? You say, that's what I do. So I build websites, I'm a web designer. You get engaged with this client and they take you down a path of inventory, uh, parts, service uh, applications, calendars. Now salespeople need to access this site and you're saying to yourself, I'm just a, I'm just a web designer, right? I, I can't build these applications, I can't do this stuff. Where's my contract? You didn't have a contract, right? How many people have been engaged with a, with a client and said, I gotta add this problem, I have to add this to my contract so this doesn't happen again? Okay, okay, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, so that's sort of how I got started in all this, and this is probably like 10 years ago. And now uh, I'm running a WordPress web, uh, web company, uh, and I'm doing a little podcast called The Matt Report. Does anybody tune into that? Sweet. Just a handful of you. Good. So a lot of you don't know how stupid I really am. <laughs> I'm the co-founder of Slogan Studio. We're a web, uh, WordPress web shop. We build themes and do things like that. We also produce... Uh, some of the most popular WordPress podcasts and web shows on the web. And throughout the last year, I've been interviewing these folks who are running WordPress shops and selling WordPress themes and building WordPress plugins and doing $30,000 a month in sales and millions of dollars a year. Um, and we're going to look at a few case studies about how they're doing this. The show is really geared uh, towards uh, three different tracks, and this is some of the stuff we're going to talk about today. The freelancer, how many people are just freelancers, as it be? How many people are career developers working for a company or stuff like that? How many consider yourself neither, just an entrepreneur trying to build a business? My people, my people. Good stuff. So the number one thing is, and we go back to the story I, I, just, I just talked about myself, who are you, right? What do you really do? What, do you really, what, are, your, what are your intrinsic skills uh, in your business? If you're not a web designer, if you're not literally living in Photoshop from day to day, why do we use the word web designer, right? Or web developer? So WordPress has a very low entry, uh, low barrier to entry. We can install it, we can, do, we can set up plugins, we can install themes, we can do all this stuff but why should we consider ourselves a web designer if we're not? So a lot of my guests have uh, focused on what they're really good at. It's their intrinsic skills, not your I can skills, right? I can install a theme, I can install a plugin. But dare you say you're a web developer and then all of, all of a sudden someone comes to you and says, I wanna build Facebook or I wanna build this mobile application, can you do it? Why label yourself that? Why not use the term, I'm a WordPress consultant, or I engage with you to uh, launch these different services onto the web. Why label yourself a web developer if you're not? Define your goals. A lot of the guests that I've spoken to all have goals. How many people have a goal set up? How many people are trying to get just more money from their clients? Okay. How many people say no on a daily basis? to clients and yourself. Mm. You have to say no a lot more. Say no a lot, right? Everybody comes to me and says, 
out of all your guests, I've been doing it for a year, 53 guests, one a week, a little bit more than that now, um, what's the common thread that they all have? The common thread is they say no a ton, right? They say no to their clients, they say no to themselves, they say no to the products that they're building, they're saying no to additional features. This is really the common thread. It's not, did they game SEO or did they change the color blue to red and they got more sales? That's not it. They stay focused. So my uh, first case study, Bill Erickson. Anybody know Bill? One. Bill's a, Bill is a machine. If the Terminator's built WordPress website, this, that would be Bill. BillErickson.net, he is a Genesis Studio Press developer. That's uh, all he focuses on. So he says no to somebody saying, oh, I've got this theme from iThemes, will you work on it? No. I do Studio Press and Genesis. This is my focus. Bill's out in Texas. Spoke to him. At any given point, he has 12 projects in the queue, and his base price is two, uh, 2500 bucks per session, right? Per he, what he calls these sessions. Right now, if you go to Bill's site, he is booked until December 9th. How many folks are booked out that far? Be honest. Okay, good. At the low end, per phase, he's making 30000 or revenue. So, and he's also taking larger projects at the same time. Convert this to annual dollars, that's not bad, right? How many folks want to be at this level? I do, right? I do. Um, but he's focused on Genesis. How many people are focused on Genesis or have a particular platform that they're focused on? How many people realize that you can go in these types of directions with WordPress? Or don't realize it, I guess I should ask. <laughs> um, he systemizes like a boss, right? This guy has a system for everything from first cold email that comes in to delivering uh, to the 30 days of support that he gives af afterwards. He has an intense system. Um, he also has a really good contract uh, that I didn't put in here. Um, but he had, just like we all had, uh, the issue of launching a site, and then a week later they're like, well, I just logged into my site, where are all my pages? Uh, my about page, <laughs> my products, where are they? Well, I don't do that, I, I take your PSD, I turn it into Genesis, I charge you 2,500 bucks, we ship it. Well, I thought you were gonna put it in the pages. So he takes from these experiences, he collects this data, he analyzes every single sale, and he goes back and he says, here's what I did wrong, here's what went right. And he puts that into a contract, he puts that into a new system, he puts that onto a page of his own website, and he learns from each, each one. Um, he also does another thing, which I find which I actually switched to after I talked to him, is he bases his contract on um, the start of his work. How many people say half now, half later? Okay. How many people are chasing people for money? Well, not bad. He bases his 25% down to schedule a project. So uh, you, your customer contacts you, so I'm ready to go. Here's all the requirements that, that you ask of me, Bill which is my PSD and my design, my design outline, 25%, he schedules you somewhere in his queue. He then invoices the, the client 75% the day the project starts to be paid five days after the project is complete. That way, he's not chasing anybody, and he doesn't have to release the code until they pay them. They've got that five-day window uh, to just review with him and Make sure it's acceptable. Now he'll 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 be a little lenient to okay this I'll tweak this or I'll tweak that that kind of thing. But the idea is to structure your contracts on the work that you're starting to get paid when you do the work, not wait for the client. Um, I mean, years ago we used to do the same thing. It was 50 now, 50 then, and then you're waiting for them to put in content. You're waiting for the client to complete their site. You're waiting for them to learn WordPress. Um, and if these expectations aren't outlined, uh, you are stuck chasing uh, for money. Corey Miller, iThemes.com, one of the nicest guys from the South, just saw him at Pressnomics. He was labeled the sexiest voice on stage. Uh, really good guy. How many people use iThemes? 
So Corey, uh, he has iThemes.com and he has WebDesigner.com, WebDesigner.com, uh, and they're a multi-million-dollar WordPress business, 25 plus uh, employees. They're making themes. They have a framework called Builder, uh, which I guess could be a, a competitor to the Studio Press scene. Um, but what I like about Corey is his business is based around service products and education, so it's multiple revenue streams. So Bill will just take your PSD, chop it up, turn it into a st Studio Press theme, and see you later. And it works. But it's just Bill. Bill is one guy. He doesn't have a team. Corey employs 20 plus people, they build themes, plugins, and they do the education. How many people are actually in the process of trying to build a plugin or a theme? Okay. How many people are sort of want to get into that for, for revenue? Extra additional revenue? Okay. So he focuses on the multiple streams of revenue. And he's constantly doing research and development. Uh, they just launched Exchange, which is a WooCommerce or e-commerce competitor, right? E-commerce market is pretty, not, I wouldn't say saturated, but there is a lot of competition out there, and he just went in with blind passion to do better than the rest and create a simple, simplified e-commerce platform. And he's doing really well with it. But he has a passion for his team and for his customers. When you, when you talk to Corey, you, don't, you never talk about WordPress. You're not talking about coding. He's like me, we don't really do that. We don't really do that anyway. Uh, but he's just super passionate about building a great business, connecting with his audience, and building a culture um, at, his, at his office that uh, is unmatched. He tries to do a lot of local. He's in Oklahoma, I think. And uh, he tries to hire a lot of folks uh, locally. How many people have a team of four or more? Jose Cavalier, not really a WordPress guy. Actually, he likes Drupal more than he likes WordPress. Uh, but this is a guy who started uh, with Razorfish out in New York. And he, uh, a few years ago, went out to the LA division, opened up their LA office. And Jose is a designer. How many know of Jose and what he does at the school? No? So he, tra he educates web designers on how to build processes, right? How to build processes with customers incoming, design projects, processes with your team. Excuse me. One of the best things he said was behaving like an agency and looking like an agency will land you bigger clients. If you ever do watch this episode, he swears a lot too. Um, but he's a very energetic guy and uh, a lot of the advice he gives uh, is phenomenal. But he's used to dealing with $100,000 uh, client work. Big brands, big organizations. The number one thing is slowing the client down. I was just in uh, a meeting the other day with somebody, and I sat down, and the first thing they said was, here's what I want on the homepage. I want, you know, I want my, a historical picture here with a slider going across with 17 different slides, all of our team photos below, and I'm like, wait, 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 like, we, we have to slow it down, right? We have to uh, uh, conform to this process, and he has a great uh, process where he will analyze the customer first and give them an exam. Uh, what type of person are they? What type of clients are they looking for? And then he will analyze their clients uh, you know, for best results. Create a process that works for both, of, for both of you. So a process, the best thing is, you're trying to get money. You're trying to get revenue. You're like, I'm not gonna say no to this person because I need revenue. And then you sort of get, okay, you talk to this person, you write all these notes, okay, I'll get back to you with an estimate. Then you go and you talk to somebody else. And you get all this stuff in front of you and you're trying to get these invoices out and you're like, God, I'm so overwhelmed. I just want to build the site. The process of slowing it down and analyzing each project, not just for the client's sake, but for your own sake, slow you down. Make myself say, okay, I have to go through these steps. I have to use this system. Uh, so he'll do user profiles. And he will look at somebody and say they're dorky, uh, maniacal, and... Um, like there's a tech, a tech term that he uses. But he'll call people dorky, and this is what you do. You're dorky and technical. You're dorky and man maniacal. You're maniacal and dorky, however that would mix together. Um, and he uses this process uh, to educate the client and, their, and, and find out who their users are. Charge more for your roles, right? So this is another key element. If you are a solopreneur or a freelancer, you're doing project management, 
you're doing copywriting at some time. Sometimes you're doing the design, you're doing development, you're doing support. Sometimes you're troubleshooting hosting. And then you start writing it down, you're like, holy shit, I do a lot, right? I am a lot of labels. Why aren't we charging more, right? How can we break that up? This goes back to what I uh, had said earlier. If I'm not a designer, I'm not a developer, I'm gonna find a designer and developer to give these roles to, right? Partner with somebody. If you have enough revenue, bring somebody on. Chris Lemma, Lemma School of Greatness. How many people know Chris? All right, a few more hands. <clears throat> Chris is a great guy. Uh, he doesn't necessarily have a WordPress business, but he's in the enterprise space. And for some odd reason, he spends all his time running us WordPress people. I don't know why. I don't know what he's up to. But chrislemma.com, uh, he's sort of like me, where we'll talk about business uh, and entrepreneurship. And I got three words for Chris. It's excellence, consistence, and present. <clears throat> So he'll talk about being excellent at what you do. Uh, excellence of who you are. He is the most consistent blogger that I know. Every single day, he's writing out a new blog post. How many people are blogging? How many blogging every day? Oh, but I tried. Like, I was like, I'm gonna do it. And I wrote up my calendar, I put all my sticky notes across, and I'm like, I can't do this. I get a job, I can't do this. Uh, and he's present, right? So what do I mean by that? He's everywhere, right? He's everywhere, he's everyone, he's everything. He's just all over the place. Um, and across the board, if you are consistent like Bill, excellent like Jose, and present like Chris, I didn't include Corey in that, I don't know why. Uh, but if you are all these things, uh, you are going to be uh, the thought leader of your, of your particular uh, niche. So over the course of a year, I've built up an audience and I recently surveyed them and I said, what is your biggest challenge? And one, two, three. Number one, more traffic. Number two, more money. And three, getting better. Um, to this audience here, it is relatively true. I look at the more traffic thing and I'm like, okay, why do you want more traffic? Do you just want more traffic or do you want the right traffic? I mean, we're, we're talking about qualified leads that we want, right? And of course we want money. And of course we want to get better. Going back to the to Chris Lemma, perfect way to get more traffic, blogging, right? Outreach. We're doing it right now. We're meeting people, we're shaking hands, we're on Twitter. Um, the more and more you are engaged offline, the more you will become engaged online with these folks after you leave events like this. More money, uh, Chris Lemma, Jose, they all talk about selling on value, right? So, local mechanic comes to you and says, hey man, I want, a, I want a website. I've got coupons on my website. I want more oil changes coming through the door. So you look back at your stuff and you're like, okay, if I look at my data, I can probably do this, it's like a $500 website. But to the client, isn't it more valuable to get these leads coming through the door? So why don't we talk about that? Why don't we slow the customer down and say, okay, you want a website, how much money you got? I got like 400 bucks. I saw this on GoDaddy on the Super Bowl, I can do this like myself. Well, sure you can, no problem. How much do you charge an hour at your shop? Oh, it's 85 bucks an hour, okay. Well, we're gonna look at how many leads you're gonna get through this website. How many potential oil changes are you gonna get? Multiply that out by some revenue. Are you gonna do like $15,000 a year in oil changes just on this website? Oh, yeah, definitely. I hope so, my, my son runs my Facebook, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's worth $15,000, how about a 20% investment? Who starts a business without investing some money, right? Flip the roll a little bit. Has anybody ever tried that? Nice, does it work? Yeah. Getting better. Again, we're doing it right now, right? We're, we're in here, we're all uh, congregating, learning more, le learning to be better at WordPress. But where I saw my business grow and where I saw other folks uh, grow in their business is release those things you can't do. You're not a designer, partner with a designer. The pie is much bigger. Even though you're sharing it, the pie is infinitely bigger. Uh, and then you can uh, continue to, to uh, scale your services that way. Dollar signs, one dollar sign. You increase focus and consistency. You get focused like the Bill Erickson. You get consistent like the Chris. You focus on one platform. It's a big world, big pie, big 
Twitter sphere. But I am the guy who does studio press for bread makers. Right? You look at that. You say, I am, every day I am going to blog and market about bread making websites. And you focus on that. Tell them the value of great product. Again, it's a whole other uh, talk about doing products, but WordPress now affords you the ability to have your digital product. And you see this all the time. Everybody who's kind of into web marketing, ebooks, training courses. Now with WordPress, you can design themes specifically for these bread makers, plugins that sp are specific to these bread makers, and you can sell this digitally for passive income. Side note, passive income. <laughs> it is not passive in the sense that you don't have to work for it, right? How many people follow Pat Flynn's smart passive income? It's passive in the sense where you're getting income passively, but the act of it is still proactive, so you're still supporting people, you're still marketing it, you're still uh, spending some money uh, on it. Um, but the great thing is that, you know, three in the morning when you wake up, 10 theme sales. That's great. Three or $400 in the bank. Until the support requests come in, that's a whole other thing. Uh, and of course, engage and connect. This is the number one for me, this is the number one for them. These, these folks are in the WordPress community, they have been for years, um, and they engage with each other online, in person, they connect with you, they're open, they're open source in that sense. Talked about this before, saying no a lot, saying no to myself, Dan works with me, he says no to me more often than not, because every day we wake up and we're like, okay, what feature are we gonna add today? What can we do with this client? What can we do in this video? No, 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 okay, we'll do this one thing, right? Simplifying uh, and, and really narrowing it down. Say no to yourself, say no to the wrong client, say no to the wrong product, say no to the distractions, uh, and say no to the haters who might say that your idea is stupid, right? Uh, people looked at me and like, who the hell wants to hear about WordPress business? Who wants to talk to these people about WordPress, their WordPress businesses? It's still working for me, even though the haters say no. The WordPress economy is still growing, uh, and there's room for you. There's not one person that I've spoken to over the last year that said that we're on a decline. Everyone says we're just getting started, which is good news, which is good news. Bad news is, or everyone here is competition, right, in the sense. Competition is good, right? Competition is going to cause innovation. It's gonna be better for our clients. It's gonna stimulate the brain cells to build something better and not just the same old thing. Thank you. Questions? Any questions? I, uh, Trent Lipinski, Cyberchimps. Uh, it's the number one theme uh, on WordPress.org. How many people are downloading themes from WordPress.org? Okay, you might see it at the top, responsive. Uh, 800,000 downloads. He does uh, $30,000 a month uh, in revenue from, from his theme shop. Uh, so he's doing really well. Uh, I didn't include him in this one um, because he's just a, a fanatical coder and uh, he just has a team of people that's just going at it, building uh, sites day in and day out. Um, but that's also another uh, amazing business to get into, especially if you're looking to you know, focus in on building a digital product. There's some real money to be made. Uh, Trent Lipinski, uh, cyberchimps.com. Yeah. Um, he's got many, but the most popular one is responsive. Yes, ma'am. How did you start? Oh, so the question is, how did I start? Well, I did the same thing. I was going, uh, I was just into the web, right? When front page was like the number one tool. Uh, and I was just building, uh, you know, messing around building sites. Actually, GeoCities was probably my first experience building a website. Um, but I worked for a tech company. I was doing things on the side. My dad was a pro photographer. He started getting people asking questions. Hey, can you build websites? I was using WordPress at the time. We started there. This was four and a half years ago. And um, just escalated from there. Yes, sir. 
So uh, you've been talking to people for uh, a little over a year, it sounds like? Yes, yep. Is there one like market segment, one area of business, you know, theme development, plugin development, uh, or, or kind of custom site ground up stuff that you're finding is um, a, more, a more popular mm -hmm. route to kind yeah. of enter the WordPress marketplace? Sure. Um, it's a great question. So themes and plugins, I mean, how many people go to ThemeForce and have used themes from ThemeForce before, right? It's like 30 bucks, right? And you get it, and you know, you get all the stuff, it's got 5,000 features in it, it's like 50 megabytes when you download it. For some reason, the PSD is included in the upload file, like what the hell's going on? Um, so there's a great discussion going on about sustainability in this stuff, in this ecosystem. Um, you know, you see some places like Elegant Themes give away 72 themes for literally 37 cents a theme. Uh, Ethan, who talked about web design, I mean, that is not sustainable for us, right? 37 cents, I mean, I put a little bit more value to my work than 37 cents per site. Um, so themes is a very saturated market, but I think at the top level, the 20% or the 1%, uh, you can make some, some serious money. Plugins is on the upside, right? There's a lot of opportunity in building a plugin now, I wouldn't do it in the sense of social sharing plugins. There's a billion of them. Um, but finding uh, a, a little target that the bigger, you know, probably the bigger the target, the more opportunity. And a lot of folks are saying, well, WordPress, we're just selling to other WordPress folks. It's, it's true. But you take a look at backup. Anybody can use backup. Or you look at search. WP Search just came out. It's an awesome plugin. And it was like, well, why wasn't this just built into core to begin with, right? But it's an amazing plugin, 25 bucks. Um, so plugins are definitely on the upside, uh, and that's where folks see the biggest opportunity. I also say that mobile, mobile anything, plugin wise, is on the upside. WP Touch are probably what folks are most commonly familiar with. Uh, they have a great product, but there's plenty of room to compete against them. It's not an easy undertaking by any stretch of the imagination, um, but they have a very uh, premium level plugin, and there's plenty of opportunity to make things simpler um, and uh, progress that way. Yes, sir. Hi, Matt. Hey, how you doing? Good. I have a question for you. This is sort of my biggest problem. And how do you manage your time? For instance, like during the week, do you work on weekends, etc., those kind of things? Yeah, it's a great question. So always in startup mode, always flexible and agile, so I'm working all the time. Um, but the, the, the phrase that, I, I, that goes through my head every time I start getting a little burnt out is I love my job. Literally, that's it. <laughs> and that's what keeps me going, right? So I, I continue, continually work 24-7. Um, but managing time from a technical level, uh, you know, Google Calendar, Wonderlist, uh, Trello is an amazing uh, project management tool. Probably a lot of folks are familiar with Basecamp. Um, but Trello, I find to be much more lightweight and a lot uh, more responsive um, and just lighter all, all in all. I don't give clients access to project management tools anymore because it becomes a training session on how to use project management tools, and I don't want to do that. Um, but I do answer your question is yes, I, it's, it's constantly on, um, but it's the, the struggle of the entrepreneur, right? We're always thinking, I can do this, I can do that. I can build this. You see opportunity, you start chasing it. I built a plugin the other day for mobile, uh, a mobile responsive um, email capture, right? Something that slides up and people can slide it with their fingers, right? It's been like a week, like drawing it all out, brainstorming it, wireframing it. And I had the plugin built and I'm just sitting at it looking at it. I don't want to do this. <laughs> Why did I even waste my time, right? Um, so it, it, is a, it is an internal struggle. I don't have a, a concrete answer other than the technicals of Wonderlist and Google Calendar. Um, and time blocking is awesome. Um, specifically to the show, each show takes like four to five hours to make. So I try to film just on Mondays and Tuesdays, get everybody done, and then have uh, a, a good you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, where we can just do work and pump out uh, the content and not have to worry about filming and things like that. I also don't do meetings on Fridays. And I don't take phone calls past 2 p.m. <laughs> so I try to leave the afternoon uh, to work. Yes, sir. Um, I've been working as a freelancer and um, have gone from using themes to 
um, starting to use some starter themes in, in search of like a framework ecosystem that I can sort of work in. So I'm working with Canvas right now and starting to learn Bootstrap, but how would you advise um, an individual in terms of uh, investing in sort of a theme or framework ecosystem that we could grow with but feel like we've made the right choice over time? Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. Dan and I talk about that all the time. Uh, the stuff that we do is the ecosystem is what you're buying into. It's no different than Android's, uh, the Android Play Store and iTunes App Store, right? So Woo, the guys at Woo are tremendous. They just had a big thing where their prices went up. Did you get in before the price hike? No, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, but it's a perfect thing, I mean, it's an amazing product, right? And I think if you invested everything in, in their ecosystem to build your typical either marketing site or e-commerce site, it might set you back a couple hundred bucks, if that. And then you might be going out and selling it for like 5,000 bucks, right? You know, so the investment isn't that bad. Uh, Woo, Studio Press, iThemes are probably the top three uh, ecosystems that you can invest into. Um, you made a good choice with Woo. Uh, and we talk about the workflow, right? You get into Canvas, and if you're comfortable in it, and you just simply get it, like, I understand this stuff, stick with it. I wouldn't feel worried about, uh, maybe I should go check out Studio Press because I've heard some things. I would just stick with what, what you're good at. Um, each one has sort of its own little flavor of how it does things, and uh, you just have to look at the support, the pricing. Um, have you opened up a support ticket with them yet? Yeah, yeah. They're, yeah they're great. You know, I, I would just feel comfortable with that. You know, I, have, I feel comfortable recommending that. I feel comfortable recommending Studio Press and iThemes. Um, you know, I think once you get into it, as long as it's jiving for you and it makes sense when you go to the front end and give it to a client and the client gets it. Yeah, I feel comfortable with, with any of those top three choices. Does that answer? Yeah, just uh, can you add uh, some comments about Bootstrap? Is there, is there a reason to sort of grow out of those ecosystems and embrace a framework and start your own themes, etc.? Yeah, I mean, it really, <clears throat> really depends on where you're going to go, where you're going to go with your clients. <clears throat> Nine times out of ten, if you're talking about, I mean, at least in my experience, anybody under 10,000 bucks, they're not really caring what technology we're using. You know, they're not looking at where. Nine times out of ten, we're convincing them to use this technology and why they should use it. Um, you know, I think if you're going to start scaling and taking on projects like a like an oomph or a ten up, uh, a, a bigger agency, then you start to say, okay, I really need to focus on the overhead of this. Um, you know, as long as these guys are going to take care of that for you, um, I guess it's a better answer. Is Woo's going to take care of this, uh, or Studio Press is going to figure out, you know, what you should do. They just introduced all the HTML5. Uh, schema tags and all of their uh, current themes. So it should be on them to kind of invest in this technology. Uh, but if I think if you're taking on a bigger client, a bigger project, that's when it really comes to mind. Um, are you taking on bigger projects like that? No. Yeah, I mean, I haven't had a client say to me, like, you better use an HTML5 and CSS3. We're not doing this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know? I mean, everybody wants to load up like a 30 meg Apple file and you're done with it on, on their website, so. I, I've heard many people who design websites say, I'm not gonna get let my clients screw with the back end, and then they, they take out a lot of features and only give them really limited access. Do you do that as well? You must have overheard my phone call the other day. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I was saying. Uh, no, uh, we use a plugin called Minimize, it Minimize, I think is the name of it, um, and we uncheck uh, everything um, so the folks can't uh, mess around with stuff. Um, I have two clients, clients that, uh, that host with us and, and buy into our support, and then there's clients that just take it and run with it. Um, people who take it and run with it, they take it and run with it. Um, then they have to buy into any kind of support uh, fees afterwards. Folks that are with us, locked into us with a support contract, we hide all that stuff, we give them training, you're only gonna see posts and pages uh, in the menu system. That's all you're ever gonna need in the media section. Uh, and that's all you're going to need, and we just formulate it that way. Uh, but yes, it's definitely good to hide that stuff. A question about pricing. Do you, when you meet with clients, I know you said you have a pretty strict contract, do you go back and then break that down by the hour uh, for them because there will be creep um, scope, or do you just kind of charge a, an overall um, price for the project? Uh, another great question. So. 
When we scaled out of the $500 websites, I just turned that $500 figure into consulting session, right? Where somebody's gonna walk away with a nice neat little package of, you know, here's the technology we're gonna use, WordPress, HTML5, and you give them all these, these hot keywords, give them a, a sort of an outline of how we would structure it, how we would optimize it, um, scaling, how many users are gonna be able, you know, turn that $500 number where I'm not gonna build a site for you anymore, but you're gonna pay me for consulting, and here you go. Uh, and we still do that today. Anybody, so I grew up in the car industry, right, selling cars. That's uh, where sort of the background is. And I just have this thing where like, and you probably all do, somebody calls up, yeah, I need a website. I just need it up, I don't care. Well, you wanna sit down and talk, no, 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 I just need a website. And you're just like, okay, I already know where we're going with this, right? So I say, look, it's $125 an hour for a consultation session. Over the phone, we go to meeting, five minutes. Uh, over the phone, <laughs> go to meeting, um, we'll talk about it. I'll, I'll build this little proposal for you, that kind of thing. If you need to go further, it's 500 bucks, and I can walk you through how to, or one of my guys can walk you through how to do this. We'll help you set it up. It'll be a very like one-on-one -on -one consultation. And if you understand you need WordPress, this is it. I don't want to touch it. Sorry. The price is whatever. You know, once I know their scope. Once I know their scope. Um, but I, but I negotiate first on payment terms. So, five thousand bucks and below. 25, and I do the same thing now. 25, and then 75 gets billed. Oh, I gotta pay you, I gotta, I gotta pay that 3,500 bucks all at once when you're done? Yeah, can you break it up? Sure. Do you have, you need financing? Do you need financing on this, right? Break it up. Well, I mean, you're not a bank, right? So people think that we're not really heavy lifting here, we're not really sweating. Well, it's three in the morning, I'm on my 12th cup of coffee, right, and I'm still coding away. It's, it's stress, it's work, uh, and, it's, and we have to let them know, and that is one of the, the very first uh, things that we cover is pricing. And we will talk about, before we take stuff away, we'll say, here's what our payment terms are. Does that work for you? Yeah, that's fine, okay, let's do business. You know, that, good. Yes, sir? Would I ever think about financing as a revenue source? Would I ever think about financing as a revenue source? No. No, because the revenue source for us is the support afterwards. Um, you know, and I'm not credit checking anybody <laughs> or anything like that. Uh, finance department I'm selling you uh, undercoating for your car. Um, but uh, it's a, I gotta write this down. See, this is the entrepreneurial thing. Um, but no, we, well, we will talk about it, and it's usually like a 10% increase, right? Unless, the, unless they're totally from outer space and. We, then we just won't break it up. And I say, okay, if you need this br broken up in three three phases, I will then try to push it out in our pipeline and say, okay, we're going to break this up. We'll do whatever, 30 now, 30 in 60 days, and 30 in 120. But I'll push them out further in the calendar. Um, you know, most people respect that. Yes, ma'am. Could you please use the mic so we could hear you? Yep. How do you keep um, your clients on, on, a, on a calendar, on a schedule, so that you are not waiting for content, and what are the consequences if they do not give you content for a very long time? Uh, it's very common. It's very common. You are not alone uh, in that boat. Uh, we, I, I already know we have a couple of sites that have been sitting there for well over a year, um, but we've been, uh, we've been paid for it. Um, but that's part of the that's part of the early stage discussion. The first one hour consultation, we talk thirty minutes about your website and thirty minutes about how we we work, right? Um, we want them to be confident that we are not just geeks in a basement. We are not your neighbor's step son's cousin. We are here to build you a, a true product. Um, so I come up with a I have a template for uh, each each project that I bid, and I put in our stand-up calls. I'll just estimate. I'll say in two weeks we're gonna have a meeting. We're gonna talk about the site. And that's all done, that's all in the contract. Um, there's a contract that actually talks about what we're delivering and how much and when. And then there's a project outline that I have them initial. Just bullet points, because they see the contract, and they're like, oh, I'm not gonna read this. But then they see the project outline, okay, I'll read these keywords. And then, oh, here's, the, here's sort of the estimated map. I know 
that I can meet those deadlines, right, unless something really goes south. Um, but we sell on value, we're not selling on uh, hours. Uh, like Bill, uh, we've tracked our hours over the course of, since the beginning, uh, with my operations yet. So we know each project is roughly what it's going to cost us in time. So I'll just put those in and I'll say, here's when we need to meet. If you can't make it, it's going to move. And they have a visual representation on, as to why this project keeps getting pushed out. One minute. Content I, uh, is, is talked about. It's part of, the, part of the discovery. Can you handle content? Yes, no. The guy I talked to the other day walked into his place. He's a wood, wood maker, uh, furniture maker out of uh, unfinished wood. Wants a website, wants to start selling, wants to compete against mill stores. Walked into his place, he doesn't even have a computer in his office. So he says, I want, I want e-commerce, I want, I want to sell stuff. I used to work for mill stores. I looked around, I said, where's your computer? Oh, I got my iPhone. This isn't going to work. <laughs> I'm not going to build you an e-commerce site because who's going to deal with it? Are you ready for these things? And then you have to talk about stuff like that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we don't, uh, we what don't. was the question? Uh, sorry, the question was, do we do any work time and materials, and how do we charge for that? Um, you know, very rarely are we, I mean, very rarely are we pulling things from like an iStock or, or something like that. Um, and if we're using a theme or a plugin, we're estimating that in the beginning. The project managers and the sales people are saying, okay, you know, when I put this estimate out, I already know that we're gonna uh, incur these costs. We really don't even buy themes or plugins. A lot of the stuff is just done uh, custom with us. Um, in the beginning, I would put a line item. But it's in the contract, if it ever comes up. It is in the contract, if it ever comes up. Somebody says, you know, we need to pay for a photographer. I gotta go. <laughs> Thank you.